Now I think we can all agree that golf is hard, but what if there was a way that we could make things just a little bit easier? You see, in today's video, I'm gonna show you five plus one bonus ball actually, items that as high handicap golfers, you cannot ignore. They're essential and must haves in your golf bag. In fact, I'd call them non-negotiables. Yep, happy as Larry with that. Bounding down the middle, nice and easy swing, no great swing speed, and if you're a high handicap golfer, I would probably encourage most that this to not use driver from the tee, but I know that is probably the most exciting part of golf in many ways, and you're gonna end up buying one anyway. And if you're gonna do that, there's two things that I suggest. Is one, you buy a driver with a laurel loft, and you also buy a shorter shaft. I've done lots of videos on this. It gives greater control, and that loft element will also help launch the ball, which is a key element when hitting a ball off the tee. Also with the, um, in this case, what I've got is a mini driver, and it's a real good option. Whether you like it or not, it provides 13 and a half degrees of loft. In this case, I've got a 44 inch shaft. I love the control, I love the launch angle, I love everything it does. So if you're gonna insist on playing driver off the tee, because it's the scariest element in the bag for most golfers, make sure you've got something that will help you out and make it as easy as possible to get that ball off of here and down onto that fairway some way. So that's plenty of loft, I would say 10, 11, Maybe even 12 degrees is what you're looking for as a minimal in terms of loft, but make sure you've got a shaft that you can control. And for that, I would suggest you consider nothing more than 44 inches long. Absolutely rip that. What a great ball flight. And to be honest with you, I don't care what your handicap is, every golfer should be carrying one of these clubs. And this club is a seven wood. And it's a fairway wood that just makes a part of the game really, really, that is potentially really difficult, a whole lot easier. From a tight lie, we've just found the fairway in a great position on a par five. We can have a little blast down there, get as far as we can. And it, inevitably, you will reach for a three wood because that's what we traditionally see. Driver, three wood, five wood, into long irons. But seven woods have become really prominent in, in recent months, in recent years, and much more acceptable. But still, people choose to ignore them. But what they do, they've got much more, they've got loft, which again, you'll notice there's a theme throughout everything that I show you. Loft is always your friend, makes life a lot easier. Again, because of a fairy wood profile, CG is able to be placed way back and you can get ball flight like what you've just seen, which is incredibly useful and helpful when you consider the tight lie that we've got to be able to generate that kind of launch angle is a big, big help. So really, I don't care what level, a level you are at, then a seven wood should be entertained and considered at least, but if you're a high handicap golfer, this is a position you'll find yourself in, one that scares you a little bit, then stop with a three wood, maybe even stop at a five wood, even though I am a fan, look at a seven wood, they go a long way, they launch the ball very, very high indeed, and again, are a massive help. Next thing is pick yourself a set of irons that help you out when you don't get it quite right, which is exactly what just happened then, but my end result has had no real detriment on the quality of my strike, and that's because I've got a set of irons which I would class as super game improvement. If you're a high handicap golfer, you want consistency and you want a little bit of help. You want forgiveness in abundance. So whatever you do, don't go down picking a set of irons that you like the look of or that you've seen your mates play really well with. Accept and acknowledge your own ability. You're a high handicap golfer and you're gonna need some help. So get it where you can. Super game improvement irons effectively mean a super wide sole, a real thick top line, and overall, a lot of bulk and mass. That bulk and mass allows in an iron for the CG to place as far back as it possibly can, which means it's gonna help you launch the ball, 
which again can be a serious issue for golfers that are struggling. There'll also generally be plenty of fast ball speeds across the face. There'll be a low spinning iron and lots of people will criticize them for that. But we've got to realize we've got to get to the green first before we worry about how a ball reacts due to the spin. It's a myth in my opinion. The help you need is packed into super game improvement irons. Do not get driven down the road of something that looks nice but just won't help you whatsoever once again not brand specific it doesn't matter but get yourself a big old chunky iron because that cg can be placed back further than any other iron type there is and it will invariably help you no end and once again lead to more enjoyable golf and hopefully lower scores again incredibly good ball flight be nice to get holding one on camera, but we won't find out until we get over that uh, bit of a mound. We're playing a fairly short par three, and you'll notice that I'm using a hybrid. And for this, we've got to really go back to the irons, because one thing I would suggest with those irons, you really need to stop buying the sort of made-up set of four through to pitching wedge, which again is traditionally what we've always bought. Those longer irons are not going to do you any favours, and they're going to make the game very, very difficult indeed. And that's where this kind of club can help out massively. This, in fact, is a five hybrid. I would suggest that every golfer should consider a five hybrid in the bag. It's incredibly versatile. We could have played from the fairway where we played earlier as our second shot. We chose seven wood. This club would do a very good job indeed. Then I can use it on par threes off the tee. And it just, it's again, it's got the loft of an equivalent long iron, so maybe a five iron. But the difference between an iron and a hybrid is the mass and the bulk and size of the club. And it goes back to the debate there, or the, the discussion point we've had throughout this video, which is CG. And CG can be placed further back in a hybrid than it can in an iron. And therefore, it gives us the ability to launch the ball easier, higher, and with less club head speed, which is why you start to have problems with the long irons. So a five hybrid, incredibly fast across the face, launches the ball super high, will always get you some decent consistency in terms of that distance and that carry when compared to long iron equivalents, and it's got a huge amount of versatility. And the other point to mention, and that of the seven wood perhaps as well, the ability to adjust the hybrids and the fairway woods, and you can't do that in irons, allows you to just tweak these type of clubs to get them to sit in a position in your bag that covers the exact yardage that you want to cover. So the versatility in hybrids is incredible, and they offer so much help to all golfers but high handicap golfers in particular, these things are a no-brainer. Go in, go on, go on. How good was that? My next piece of advice is pick one wedge that you become really comfortable with and familiar with. For me, I play a 54 degree wedge and I try and play it from pretty much every position I might find myself in and around the greens. And also from different distances and yardages. The reason I do that is because of what I said, confidence and familiarity. I would always suggest, and I have done in the past, that you look at things like Cleveland CBX wedges with super wide soles, almost like a, a game improvement type of wedge, if you like, if you particularly struggle with your short game, but I'm not really interested in the type. I'm just interested in you picking one wedge and getting really familiar with it. This idea of carrying three or four wedges is one of the most confusing things I've ever known. You don't need a club for every yardage. You need to get really familiar, really comfortable and confident with one wedge. And I assure you, it will lead to lower scores. Roll out. Ah, oh, not quite. Right, I promise you a bit of a bonus ball, and if you've stuck around, then it's at that very much the short end of the bag, it's the putter. A real important part of your whole setup, and one that can save you immensely. We've got an issue by where we do all the our graph, we get on the green, and then we do things like three putt, and it can be a real card wrecker, unjustified, and yeah, really can be painful. And if you can eliminate that, then obviously it'd be a huge bonus, and for me, I'm not going to suggest this is uh, something that you must have in your bag because it's an expensive addition. But if budgets allow and you really want to consider a new putter, then I would ask you to look at zero torque putters. 
those zero torque putters essentially don't twist as much um, throughout the stroke give you a better chance of keeping the club head square and hopefully if you read the line correctly and are able to control pace correctly you've got a better chance of holding your putts as opposed to the other options that are out there for you now We've seen a lot of putters from Lab Golf that have got that same concept. We've seen something from Axis One that have been around for quite some time. And PXG have just introduced their Allen putter with that same theory. And as I said, they don't hold putts for you, clearly. You still have to do an element of the work yourself, but they can certainly help and assist in reducing those, two, uh, those three putts, which can make a big difference to your scorecard at the end of the day. And that's me done. As... Um, five and one bonus ball there pieces of equipment that to be quite honest with you i've suggested these are for high handicappers but they're pretty much relevant for most golfers they shouldn't be dismissed and should all be tried out because they are game changers that can help with areas of the game that are difficult enough as it is so get the help where you can get it anyway as ever that's me done Thank you for watching i hope this helped in some way and uh, give me your feedback and comments down below hit that like button and i will see you all very soon